Well, the SBA has released the names of those who received more than $150,000 from the Paycheck Protection Loan Program. And the list, which is a searchable database, contains more than 600,000 names. Billionaires, country clubs, private jet companies, private schools with huge endowments, spouses of prominent politicians like Nancy Pelosi, companies connected to Republican lawmakers, Washington lobbying firms, Hollywood talent agencies, Kanye West, pro soccer teams all received millions in government funding while small businesses run by your everyday Americans around the country went bankrupt. We are going to break this down, but first, please subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, the more subscribers this channel gets, the more they actually put this out in front of people. And I've been noticing my algorithm has been, uh, you know, because they kind of mess with it on the backside. The algorithm has been really screwing with me lately, maybe because I've been speaking the truth about a bunch of stuff over the last couple of months and few days. But um, please subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much for watching. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the PPP program, the government created a $650 billion dollar fund to be loaned out to businesses with 500 or fewer employees that would be partially forgivable if they spent that money on employees salaries. So um, in most of our minds, I think we all thought that that money was supposed to go to, you know, your average mom and pop shops and small businesses. And this was supposed to help them weather the storm because the government shut us all down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, though much of the much of the money did, in fact, go to those small mom and pop shops and small businesses on Main Street, um, because of the complicated way that the program was set up, many businesses were actually left out in the cold. Lots of businesses were unable to obtain this money, particularly businesses run by women, immigrants, and people of color, while billionaires, elites, and the well-connected ran off with millions. Now, according to CNBC, Soho House, which is an ex exclusive membership club controlled by billionaire Ron Burkle, received loans totaling $9 million to $23 million million dollars by applying for seven loans through its New York, Miami Beach, Chicago and West Hollywood locations, which, by the way, this is how many of these bigger businesses game the system. The, the rules were if you had under 500 employees then you could apply for this. Well, companies that had more than 500 employees, but they had many different locations, were still able to, to apply for the loans location by location by location. Now, Soho House, by the way, is a membership only exclusive club where people pay annual dues. It's like a country club. And there they were running off with millions of dollars. You and I cannot go into Soho Club without paying the thousands of dollars annually into their memberships. I mean, it is for the elite of the elite. Now, by the way, last month, Soho House also raised $100 million from private investors. So you'd think that they would be able to use some of that money to, you know, pay some of their employees. Billionaire developer Joe Farrell, famed for building and renting mega mansions in the Hamptons, received a PPP loan of up to $1 million. Farrell made, his headline, made headlines in May when he rented a mega home called The Sand Castle for nearly $2 million for the summer. Why does that guy need a million dollar loan? A million dollars for the average mom and pop shop or small business where they were not receiving, you know, more than 30, 40, 50,000, maybe up to 100,000. That's a lot of businesses that could have remained up and running had this guy not taken that $1 million or really just had the government been uh, just been more clear about how to obtain this money which we'll get into. The whole thing was really a scam. There's still some money left that people can apply for, and that's been extended until somewhere in the middle of August. I believe that the extension just happened yesterday, probably because people caught wind of all of the billionaires and millionaires who are running off with all the money. The Trump administration did extend it. It was supposed to end July 1st or June 30th, but now they're extending it into August. Now, the Greenbrier Hotel, which operates a famed luxury resort in West Virginia and is owned by billionaire West Virginia Republican Governor Jim Justice, received five million to 10 million bucks. So there you go, billionaire Republican Governor West Virginia from West Virginia, Jim Justice, got a bunch of money, five million to 10 million bucks. You don't think a billionaire could have supported his employees rather than going to the government to get our tax dollars? Kanye West who recently congratulated his wife, Kim Kardashian, for officially becoming a billionaire, received two to five million dollars. A billionaire who he's a billionaire and his wife's a billionaire, couldn't afford two to five million dollars to pay for his employees. They cited in their paperwork that that saved 160 jobs 
for his company. He couldn't have supported those people on his own. This is the problem. At least four major league soccer teams also tapped into the PPP program, according to the data. D.C. United and Inner Miami were approved for loans in the $1 million to $2 million range, while Orlando City and the Seattle Sounders each applied for between $2 million and $5 million. This is the problem with this program. This trickle-down economics doesn't work. They attempt trickle-down economics when it comes to everything, including a pandemic bailout. This is the problem. 40 million Americans have filed for unemployment. We have 40 million Americans who are not working. This entire point of the PPE program was to tr trickle down, give the businesses a bunch of money and say, okay, we expect you to take this money and now pay your employees with it. Well, what happened? 40 million Americans are now unemployed. So clearly that didn't work. Why didn't they give this money straight to the Americans? Why didn't they say to each individual, okay, we're going to make sure you're able to stay in your home and feed your family and pay your bills. This would have relieved the businesses and it would have let those businesses just worry about their other bills. They also could have, on top of that, frozen all rent and mortgages, which they absolutely should do for all people in this country. Every residence should have their rent and their mortgage forgiven, and businesses also should have their, their rents or mortgages uh, forgiven at this point. You know, they could just roll it to the back end. So, uh, but right now, we've got people going into massive amount of debt. I mean, this was a PPP loan program, and now you've got millions of Americans, millions upon millions of Americans who are in rent debt. They've got their landlord saying, well, okay, you don't have to pay, but you're eventually going to have to pay. Even though the government shut you down, you have no job, you have no means for making any money, no means for making back this money, you're still going to have to owe this money later on, which is uh, another thing that is an absolute botched response for this pandemic when it comes to the finances. One of the big issues that a lot of tenants are facing is their landlords are shaking them down for this money. And another list that needs to be unveiled to the American people by the banks is which landlords, which mortgages were were frozen. You've got a lot of landlords where their mortgages were, uh, the, the bank said, okay, look, you don't have to pay it. What we're going to do is we're just going to tack on what you owe to the back end of your mortgage. So rather, you know, if you owe right now, if you're 15 years and one month into your 30-year loan, then what the banks are saying to a lot of these people is saying, okay, what we'll do is we're now extending your loan. So it was going to expire in um, 14 years and 11 months. Now it's going to extend again to 15 years and six months, right? So we're going to go ahead and roll over six months or nine months worth of mortgage to the back end of your loan. We'll just redraft the documents. You re-sign the documents and that's that. So they're not having a loan. They're not having to uh, pay back on top of what they already owe. It's not like, okay, well, you didn't pay March, April, or May, and here you are in in June, July, and August, and the rest, you know, now you're going to have to double up what you owed. You're going to have to double it up in these next few months. A lot of the banks didn't do that. They said, what we'll do is we'll just take that and roll it to the back end of your loan. Now, of course, with rent, a lot of places cannot do that. Some, some places should have done that for a lot of the tenants said, well, look, your lease was set to expire on in January. Now we're going to go ahead and extend it until May. Are you willing to, you know, extend your your lease until then and you just stay longer? They could have done that. They didn't do that. A lot of the complaints from the mortgage from the landlords was, well, I still have to pay my mortgage and if my tenants don't pay, then I'm screwed, which is fair enough, un understandable, but a lot of banks actually gave relief to the landlords. They gave relief to mortgage homeowners and building owners. And so what we're seeing now is a lot of those people are not rolling over that relief to their tenants. They're still shaking their tenants down for rent while they themselves really received relief from the banks. And we're seeing from this PPE pro that from this PPP program that many people took advantage of it who really were not in need of this program. These were big businesses, billionaires um, that really absolutely did not need 
this money. And they still went to the government and tapped into the funds, funds that are going to be forgiven by our tax dollars. Meanwhile, Americans go under, Americans go bankrupt, Americans get evicted, Americans have to line up at food banks in order to feed their families. This is outrageous. And here's the thing. Uh, for one, the banks ran off like bandits. They gave out loans and they're continuing to collect on loans and debts, which all should have been frozen during the pandemic. They should have said any debt collections, any loans, any rents frozen. Now, then people say, well, then how are the banks going to operate? They still have to operate. Well, if the government was paying for all the people and all of the salaries, if the government was giving the money directly to the people, that in would include the bank workers. They themselves also would have received money, bailout money from the government directly as the way it should have worked. And then the banks could have continued to operate, well, not operate because they wouldn't have needed to collect any money. So if they weren't collecting any money and they weren't operating really much, you know, they were running on a skeleton operation because they weren't using their massive loan program that where they make tons of money off of interest rates, then we, everything would have been okay. But instead, the government decided, both Democrats and Republicans got together and decided that they were going to do trickle down relief just like they always do with all of their trickle-down economics. And the anger from this botched response on the economic scale, on the economic side of things, is going to be unprecedented. People are going to be up in arms and angry when they realize the brunt of this pandemic, when it hits them smack in the face and people start to really feel it financially. This botched response by our government is going to be the, the American people will be outraged. Look, 2008, people were outraged. You, you've seen the outrage coming from that. But 2008 was complicated. A lot of people didn't understand 2008 when it was happening. It took years for people to wrap their minds around what the government did and how they screwed over the average American. But this, this is in our faces. This is blatant. This is is brute force smack in the face. Everybody feels that the government shut us down. They said, you will not be able to work. We are actually forbidding it. And now you're going to have to somehow, you're going to go into massive debt. Once again, the banks win. Once again, the banks walk away with all of our money in the greatest wealth heist of human history. This is outrageous. Not one person should be worrying about losing their home. Not one person should worry about losing their business. Not if the government is responsible for this shutdown. And you know what? To be quite honest with you, not one person sitting in office right now, not one politician currently sitting in our government should get their job back this fall. That is what should happen. They all should be eliminated, every single last one of them, including our favorites. Because unfortunately, they all failed. All of them failed us. They did not work hard enough on behalf of the American people. And, and right now, Americans are starting to feel it. But in six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, it is going to be very apparent how devastating this pandemic and botched response has been. You can look up who actually received that money. It is a searchable database. I will put that link down below for you. There is 600,000 names. They did break it up by state. So maybe you want to find out, you know, if you're in an apartment complex, for example, that is owned by a big company, you might want to find out if they received some PPP money to pay for their workers. Meanwhile, while still shaking you down for rent, you might want to find out if your boss received money and still fired you and you're not getting your job back. You might want to find out these things. You can do that by searching in the database down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and hopefully we all get through this together.